News at Sunrise. It is 459. Here are your morning headlines. We're starting off with breaking news an officer involved shooting in Hillsboro. That's a live look near Northeast Edgeway and Summer Falls Street. Right now we don't know a lot, but we do know Edgeway is closed between Summer Falls and Holly Street. Police say there is no threat to the public. We'll certainly keep you updated as we learn more. Portland police say there were seven shootings early in the new year. You can see they happened all over the city Tuesday night. A total of four people were shot. Two near Northeast 148th and Fremont, one in Southeast Portland at 124th and Powell, and another person walked into the hospital with a gunshot wound. No word on any of their conditions. Portland police say they don't think those shootings are connected. And just an incredible moment caught on camera. A sneaker wave in Santa Cruz County wa wiped out a man standing there on the rocks. Park Rangers rescued him from the water. He's doing okay. But boy, does this really illustrate the power of a sneaker wave. Remember, experts say never turn your back on the ocean. Yikes. Those are some of your Thursday headlines. Now, here's what's coming up on Sunrise. Ah, we just won the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Take a look at your Rose Bowl champs. The Oregon Ducks pull off a nail-biter Rose Bowl win led by a hometown hero. And this morning, we are hearing from coaches and players after they pulled off the big win. And snowstorms, eclipses, wildfires, and twisters. It has been a wild ride over the past decade. Today, we are taking a look back at Oregon's biggest weather stories of the 2010s. Yeah, there is a lot to talk about. Fortunately, the start of the new year yesterday was yes. beautiful and sunny for a lot of the day. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Rod, can we get one more? Oh, come on. You are <laughs> greedy. <laughs> we want it. It was 56 degrees yesterday. We're not going to do that again. We don't need to do that again. Good morning, everybody. We do have just a few showers uh, on the radar, some rain offshore. It's one of those days the shower chance continues, but taken as a whole will be more dry than wet. And it's still pretty comfortable outside. 44 degrees out the airport right now. I have us at 47 at lunchtime. It's possible some areas will just get up to 50 today. I think we're mainly dry tonight. 47 at 5 p.m. Your seven day forecast coming up shortly. All right, we'll see you in a few route there. Purple looking to throw for it. Oh. Catch made. First down, Jawan Johnson. Woo, that catch is what sealed it. Your 2020 Rose Bowl champions, the Oregon Ducks. Star QB and Eugene native Justin Herbert led the Ducks to a one point win in his final game with the U of O 28 to 27 against the Wisconsin Badgers. It was high stress to the end, a dramatic finish to a game that was neck and neck from the start. Here's KGW's Orlando Sanchez in Pasadena with a recap. Good morning, everyone. What a way to close out the season for the Oregon Ducks. Pac-12 champions, their 12th win of the season, and Rose Bowl champions. But it was a long road to get to this point of confetti on the ground here in Pasadena. Just a few years ago, this team went 4-8, and eight, and these seniors had gone through three head coaches. Mario Cristobal has turned this thing around in just two seasons. And for the majority of this Ducks roster, they're from the West Coast. So since they were little kids, they grew up watching this game and hoping that one day they could play in it. And it was two guys from the state of Oregon who shined the most here at the Rose Bowl. We're at the Rose Bowl, baby. Let's go, Ducks! Let's go, Ducks, baby! The feel of it. No. Thank you. And Dex, go Dex! Oh! Oh! Hey. Welcome to the granddaddy of them all. 90,000 packed the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Wisconsin versus Oregon. One last dance for quarterback Justin Herbert, and he made the most of it. The man from Eugene delivers on the opening drive, but Wisconsin had an answer. The first time the Badgers touched the ball, 95-yard kickoff return, the second longest play in Rose Bowl history. It was a back-and-forth type of night. Seven lead changes total. Herbert making it happen with his legs, tack to the hand. But it was their defense that kept them in it, forcing four turnovers. They cashed those into 21 points. Brady Breeze 
What a story. Worked his way up from rarely playing to the Rose Bowl's defensive player of the game. One-handed scoop and score. And still, it took a fourth quarter rally from the U of O. Offensive player of the game, Justin Herbert, had his Rose Bowl moment from 30 yards to put the Ducks on top for good. Capping off a legendary career with a game winner. His third rushing touchdown of the game. All of the Ducks touchdowns were scored by two guys from the state of Oregon. Ducks win 28-27, their 12th win of the season and fourth Rose Bowl title in program history. What a ride it's been for this group of seniors. Three different coaches, a four and eight season to this. A moment, years in the making. Ah, we just won the Rose Bowl! The, the hard work that we put in and the teamwork and, and how we came together over these past couple years, it could have gone a million ways and we stuck together and, and here we are celebrating. Man, everything and more, I just, I'm still kind of lost for words and I don't think it will set in until, uh, I don't know, I don't think it ever set in. I'm a Rose Bowl champ for the rest of my life and I can't ever take that away from me. I mean, I've been through so many ups and downs in this team, but you know, I stayed faithful and I was just waiting for my opportunity. And then now I'm you know, scoring touchdowns in a Rose Bowl, like, you know, a little kid, you know, always has dreamed about, and, you know, I used to always just play about playing in a duck jersey. That's all I wanted to do. And then now I got to play in a Rose Bowl, and, you know, it's just been incredible. Let's go! It's hard to even script this kind of Hollywood story, right? Right down the road, born and raised, been just like Brady, been watching Oregon Duck football forever, and they're sitting here in front of you as Rose Bowl champion. Ducks fans, if you want the full Rose Bowl experience but couldn't make it to Pasadena, check out our YouTube page because Orlando has been posting all of his full interviews there with players, coaches, and fans, plus a ton of other really fun content from this past week. We're going to have details right there on your screen, KGW News 8 on YouTube. Now to some of the day's other news. A show of support in Vancouver today after the murder of a transgender teenager. A rally will be held outside the courthouse this afternoon as the man accused of murder appears in court. Police arrested David Bogdanov last month for the murder of 17-year-old Nikki Kuhnhausen. Court documents show Bogdanov strangled her after learning she was transgender. Kuhnhausen had been missing since June. Her remains were found last month near Larch Mountain in East Clark County. A scammer is posing as a well-known law enforcement officer to scare people into paying money they don't owe. One woman lost more than $1,000 this week. Clackamas County Sheriff's Lieutenant Brian Jensen says a crook has been calling people posing as him. Jensen is a former spokesman for Clackamas County and well known. We interview him all the time. He says this week the crook called a woman and told her there was a warrant out for her arrest and she needed to pay money and gift cards to avoid jail time. Well, that poor woman lost $1,300 in the scam. So our name is out there, our face is out there. It's easy to confirm that we do work for our respective agencies if someone were to Google it. In fact, that's what this lady did. She heard that it was Lieutenant Brian Jensen. She automatically Googled it. Sure enough, there I am. Yeah, you think you're checking up on it, right? Well, this is not the first time this has happened. In November, former Portland police spokesman Sergeant Pete Simpson shared how a scammer posed as him. Jensen says real officers will never call you demanding payments of any kind. And if you actually do have a warrant, they will show up at your door. He says if you get one of those calls, just hang up and call police directly. Okay, I want you to take a look at this picture. At first, it looks like your standard police evidence photo, but look closely and you will see that cell phone has a bullet hole. Tuesday night, deputies say this woman, Rosemarie Ancharski, fired a shot through her phone and it went into her neighbor's apartment in Bethany. It appears she pulled the trigger, you guys listen to this, while trying to take a selfie. Ugh. Neighbors told us they heard what they thought were fireworks and they were pretty freaked out when they found out what actually happened. Not quite sure what to even think about that. It's it's not nothing I would shoot up for sure. It's extremely scary. I mean, when you come back here and you see six sheriff cars over here on your right on your lane, it, it, it is scary. So we talked to the man who lives in the unit next door. The bullet came through his bedroom wall. Thankfully, though, he was in another room at the time. Unbelievable. All right, you got to check this picture out. It's safe to say these people did not expect to be ringing in the new year like this. So what you are seeing right there, all those little blobs, 
Those are tumbleweeds. Oh, jeez. And this is in eastern Washington, you guys. This isn't even in the Midwest. It shut down SR240 near the Tri-Cities. City crews had to use snow plows to clear away the tumbleweeds because they were as high as 30 feet tall. Some people just left their cars in the mess, but a few yeah. did stick around and actually celebrated the new year at midnight while they were trapped <laughs> literally in the weeds. Yeah. Then this is video from yesterday morning when it was finally daylight oh, and crews wow. freed the very last car that was stuck. That road was closed for 10 hours. Stuck in the tumbleweeds. Up. Yeah, where yeah. are you going to go? Eastern Walk. I mean, I would never think crazy. of Washington like that, right? <laughs> in Central Oregon, I guess we have tumbleweeds, but. Well, it's hard to imagine they're so, you know, they're thick loose. that you actually they get trapped in them. They must have had some them. pretty crazy wind up there. I guess, and I out. should probably check that out, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like everybody at home going, yeah. that's crazy. Well, that's I, all I know. That's all.